welcome to Connect to Success with me, Ashley Owens, 12.30, 1 o'clock on Thursdays during your lunch break, where we talk to the power networkers of the greater Philadelphia and South Jersey area, and now we're going national. I've got people coming in, getting interviewed on my show all over the country. It's pretty exciting, but today I have the pleasure and the privilege of being able to interview Tyler Zalucki. Dude, I'm so glad you're here. It's been like 17 times we've had to change before you got on the show. I know. I know. Little, I'm a little upset about that. <laughs> I wanted to come in and hang out earlier, but now you're here and I'm so pumped. Okay, so Tyler, do me a favor. Can you tell people, because I know you, but I feel like it's more fun if you do it this way. Mm -hmm. Tell people who you are, what you do, and in your industry, what makes you awesome? Okay. Who am I? Yeah. I'm, so Tyler's a lucky employee benefits consultant. Employee benefits consultant, Nicole. What does that mean? No, I have no idea. Perfect. So really what I get into is I work with businesses mm -hmm. at designing their program. So okay health, dental, vision, life, disability, and then tailor it to the needs of the individual. Okay. So if there are certain aspects of your needs, like let's say you have a need for, hey, I want to have telemedicine or virtual care. Okay. Right? Then that's Can you, you explain virtual care for people sure. that don't know what that is? Yeah, no, absolutely. it's not tr technically traditional with most companies, right? Yeah. Okay. So instead of going to your primary care physician, right, mm -hmm. you can dial up or FaceTime with a physician and then they can triage you and then they can actually write you an e-prescription and then right to the pharmacy. Oh, nice. So think about it. Think about the parent that has kids, the screaming, mm -hmm. going around, they have something, ear, nose, and throat, something's wrong. Right. Pink and, eye, obviously, always. Hey, always, yep. always. <laughs> but you don't even, you don't need to waste 30 minutes in the primary care physician's Which office. Which it's never 30 minutes. It's usually two and a half hours and, and then maybe a stale lollipop. It's yeah. never, <laughs> it's never really what they tell you. Okay, good. So that's kind of the mindset, like when I approach the design, it's how do I make it fit the molds of not only the generation of today, mm -hmm. but tomorrow, and then as they progress, needs are going to change. Maybe it's, we need to do will prep and I need a legal assistance program oh, specific yeah. to me. Like that, that would be an additional product that we can add on. And it's all about, okay, what do you need? Mm -hmm. What do the employees want? And then how does it fit in the ecosystem of the, of the business itself? What kind of businesses are you working with? I know you can work with any, but where mm -hmm. do you, I mean, where, what businesses do you find the most success in? Yeah, so I have worked on, as an account manager, like servicing the case, and then also from a sales perspective in the manufacturing sec sector, mm -hmm. um, as well as long-term care facilities. Really, when you provide a service or a good or a service, the biggest thing is that benefits are a major proponent of that offering. Right. Why they stay, mm -hmm. why they continue to be happy. So those types of organizations where they place a high value on employee benefits and when employees are, you know, those top high quality candidates that they're looking for that say, hey, I'm going to X, Y, and Z across the street. Right. Because I would their get, benefits are that, that that much better. Or, you know, as you progress through your career mm -hmm. and then you start to, because in the beginning, let's be honest. You take anything you can get. Take anything you can get. Yeah. Right. You, you know, hey, you, you're going to hire me. That's great. But then as you get older, I mean, males, let's take my example, out of college, never went to the doctor. Yeah. Never even thought about it. You guys are idiots. Right. All of you. For, for years. Yeah. But as you progress through, through your career, then your needs change. Mm -hmm. You add a family. At a family, you mm -hmm. start having different needs and you start taking a second look at how much am I paying? Mm -hmm. How does my plan pay? If I have an issue, wh who do I go to and how do I respond to that? Right. So it's, it's those types of organizations, those paternalistic, they're caring, mm -hmm. they're forward thinking. That's the, that's the best fit in the world for me and, and where I can add the most value. And Tryon Group does that. Tryon Group is, I would say, you know, if not one of the best in the United States at doing this. We do it at a state and local level, but also we have clients that are national. They have different facilities all across the United States and where we would come in and address and help them with the communication. Because right now, more than ever, we're getting communication through email. We're getting blasts, even from our bank. You know, So it's, it's changing the medium. It's video. Right now, this is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. This medium is one that people consume content how they want to consume content. Certain people like podcasts, certain mm -hmm. people like articles. So when you think about educating your employees or training your employees, you, have, you can't just do the old adage, hey, we're going to have a meeting and have it for an hour. Mm -hmm. let's, let's change the dialogue. Let's make it app-based. Let's do a video. And that's mm -hmm. another component of 
the offering at Tryon Group and what I could bring to the table that I really, really enjoy because it's it's thought provoking and it also you get collaborative. You get to get the nitty gritty. Yeah. What's working, what's not doesn't work. Oh, yeah. Bob would never do that. He would never and then and then you start to digress and go back and forth and that's that's what I love. I love that dialogue and I love getting to the essence of how can I help most? There is such an interesting dynamic when it comes to figuring out and going with the times, right? There are so many things out there like death and taxes that are always going to be the same, sure. right? But when it comes to employee benefits, when it comes to things that are a priority for people, the way that you said people digest information but also receive these benefits um, it is so different. It, it, it changes over the years. I mean, like you said, it, 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 virtual and up until last year, I had no idea what virtual care was and how that would have helped me so much instead of driving to the urgent care doctor at, you know, 2 in the morning. Well, not 2 in the morning because it wouldn't be open, but, like, having 103 fever mm -hmm. when all they had to do was just write me a ZPAP. Do you know what I mean? Like, could have been so much better. And I find that there is a disconnect in education in those kinds of service offerings unless they meet somebody like you off the cuff. Even for small to medium-sized businesses, larger ones absolutely understand the value, mm -hmm. but sometimes small to medium-sized businesses, that's the last thing on their mind is employee benefits. It's only a few people that work with them. Right. So can you can you educate the audience on what Tryon Group does that's so different besides kind of going modern with the times, but also what you bring to the table yeah i think what's most important is that you're going to look at where you compete and what i mean by that is how do your plans stack up against your competitors on a local level but also a national level so first and foremost what Tryon can bring to the table is we're going to provide you that that starting lane we're going to say all right this is this is where you are right now today and then I think what's even more powerful is it's great to understand your benchmark mm -hmm. and understanding, okay, this is where I fall, but how do I get to the next step? Or how do I continue? If I have a goal in mind where I want to add employees mm -hmm. or I need to add revenue or invest in a business unit where my, my platforms get different or I add a new machine, right? All of those items, if you think about it from an employee benefits perspective, you're, you're going somewhere. Mm -hmm. So in addition to that benchmarking and understanding where you stand, we're gonna provide a total opportunity matrix is what it's referred to. And what that does is it's a compilation of all of our clients. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about virtual care and we, also, we can also talk about value-based plan design. So let's say there are members or employees on that plan, in the plant, that they're diabetic and they need their insulin. The best way to address that is, oh, get rid of the affordability issue. Mm. Make it free or incentivize them to take that medication because you want to take care of your employees. You can tailor the health plan around that. So when I talk about this total opportunity, it's everything that you can do mm -hmm. to take your company to the next step with real life examples, contextualized examples with the data to support it to say, hey, not only are we going to provide you your starting point, but we're going to take you there, and this is how we're going to do it. Right. And I think that, as you mentioned, large companies, like they have that there. Mm -hmm. They have the communication. They have the virtual care. We're bringing this to the small and mid market, mm -hmm. which is, I think, huge and so vitally important because oftentimes it's an HR person of one yeah. tasked with not only are they looking at workers' compensation and OSHA compliance, they're also tasked with keeping their employees' morale up. Right. Which is, that is vastly right. difficult. So if you think about designing your program, mm -hmm. think about this. You know, we had this conversation today. Mm -hmm. Would you wear something 10 years ago? No. You would, you throw it out. It's yeah. stale. You can't. Yeah, you can't. In fact, you probably would be embarrassed we, to bring we, it up. We just talked about this. This, <laughs> is, this is a personal attack in my closet. But okay. Could you, <laughs> go ahead. Benefits programs need to be thought of in that same light, yeah. in that you need to continue tailor and tweak it so that it addresses the needs. The biggest thing is that claims, mm -hmm. medical claims themselves, are a subset of the medical needs of your employees and their family members. Right. So if insurance, if your health insurance isn't a mechanism that supports how do I get from A to B? How do I make sure that I take the medications? How do I make sure that I am in touching base with the right specialist mm -hmm. and getting the highest quality of care available? Mm -hmm. That's where I come and I bring in the most strength because it's an assessment, it's a true assessment of your program. And what I think that there is, there needs to be more of is your claims tell a story. Your yeah. claims tell a story. And if you can address that, and tweak the plan design, but also add other components to your program, mm -hmm. 
to, for example, generic medications. Yeah. What if they were, they were mail order and they were free huh. and they were for maintenance? Yep. You can now do that today. And if you source it through a certain provider, you can actually be cost neutral. Really? So instead of the employee paying for it, the employer can pay for everything. Right. And the employee can receive that medication. We can do an analysis to, to say, you know what? You can actually uh, subsidize this medication. And because you're getting a lower discount overall, huh. guess what? All these employees can get this drug. They're maintaining their medications. They're right. taking, and they're not concerned. Yeah. They're not concerned it's about. It's less stress. And that, that less stress allows them to be better workers. And they have not, you know, they're not distracted when they have to do their job. If they've got this medical condition and, and you know, trying to pay for the, the, the additional prescriptions, all of that. It seems like you're in the business of, um, improving people's lives rather than just Im benefits that employees give. Um, and I find that to be so interesting because when you think of employee benefits or you think of you know insurances and things like that, it can be kind of stale. It can be a stale topic. It can mm -hmm. be a very you know, um, heavily saturated market. Until you positioned it in that space and how much you guys specifically, how much Tryon Group and you, Tyler, work mm -hmm. on it, you were looking at the trends and, and, and the, the claims to see the trends of, of what what employers are, what employees are going through, mm -hmm. what they actually need, and how to subset those costs. I find that to be interesting in a in an industry that is sometimes can be kind of poo-pooed on because they don't. There's not enough education out there, um, which is why I love having you on the show because the way that you describe it is so much more personal than just checking something um, off your list when it comes to employee benefits. So, take me through um, a case study if you could. If you've worked with a client before, what they came to you with and how you fixed a problem. Yeah, sure. So. I'll take a manufacturing client, nice. right? Yeah. They're multi-facility, mm -hmm. multi-state. They had really varying needs in the population. Mm -hmm. A certain population had a subset where communication was an issue. There needed to be language translation. There needed to be someone that can properly communicate so they understood their bills. Oh, wow. Because what was happening, and this is this is another major issue. I could talk about benefits all day. I know, I love it. I could talk about benefits That's why we have a show. <laughs> <laughs> but there was an issue in which, so this member went to a participating hospital, mm -hmm. right? So he thought. It turns out that this, this specific hospital, right, they accepted his insurance, but the treating physician in that same hospital didn't participate with his insurance company. Okay. So they were considered out of network. And then what can happen is because they because the hospital is contractually obligated to agree to a certain discount, but that physician wasn't, that insurance company will pay a certain amount, but the physician can bill you for the rest. It's called That's balance. Such yeah. BS. Balance billing, it's a, it's a highly prevalent issue. Oh my God. Really? It happens with anesthesiology <gasps> a lot of the times. And you don't know. Oh How God. are you supposed to discover that before? No, you're not. So, can I please have all the doctor's names on a list? And can you please let me know if they're into my insurance? So that's when you Is have Is that why hospital bills are so funny? That's a whole nother, oh, that's an hour long right. discussion. Well, I'm getting hyped. Let's, before we go into this, we're yeah. going to take a break. But when we return, we're going to talk to you more about your tactical tips and practical takeaways. I want to hear more about this case study um, because this is fascinating and over my head and I'm, I'm stressed. Uh, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll stay tuned. We'll be right back. I want to be a contender. I want a warm belly to sleep on. A big house. How do I look? Do, do I look good? I want to play hard. My nails done. Once a month. I want. I want. I want a home. I just want a home. I want someone to love. Last year, more than 30,000 companion animals came to us without homes. 20,000 of them were felines. Let's make some homes together. Hello everyone, I'm Mark Iorio. I'm the host of Rainmakers Roundup right here on RVN TV. The show is about looking for people who are in competitive businesses that are doing something different and unique in the world of sales and marketing. Join me right here on Rainmakers Roundup on Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. and then again on Thursday evenings at 6.30 p.m. right here on RVN TV. Today's show is sponsored by Dr. Jacqueline. Take charge of your life personally, financially, and professionally. Visit drjacqueline.com to book an appointment today. Hi everybody, welcome back. 
back to Connect the Success with your host, Ashley Owens. That's me, uh, your personal networking concierge. I'm here with Tyler Zalucky. Tyler, before the break, we were going into the horrifying things yes. when it comes to health insurance and things that happen when you go to the doctor. But also, so d we were continue with your story because mm -hmm. you have a manufacturing company. A gentleman went into a um, uh, into the hospital um, that was covered under his insurance, but one of the doctors that the, the attending physician um, was not under his insurance, mm -hmm. so he got billed for the majority of it. Correct. Okay, so continue your story. Okay, that's horrifying. So. We're starting to peel back the onion. We're finding this out. <laughs> oh my and God. I'm like, you know, eyeballs yeah. up. This yeah. isn't the first time I've heard it. Wow. Um, I used to, I was, in a, I was in account management as well as client service. So I dealt oh. directly with the HR and, and financial team mm -hmm. and then also help with employee issues. So I got to, you know, real life experience. And then as we're going through this with the client, yeah. I felt like emo emotional because I'm yeah. like, what if this was, you know, my family member and this was going on? Right. So what we did was, because of the coding in the bill, uh -huh. it was deemed a true emergency. Okay. Right? So off the bat, they're not going to, it's called adjudicate, which just in, in really grandiose terms, it just means they're, they're making the bill and they're writing codes to suggest that this is what happened. Because mm. there's an emergency, it has to be taken at an in-network level. Okay. So all those bills were taken back, right? But this also, we were able to help this person and it paid at a lower rate, that's one part, but also what happens to all the other people that may not have comprehended this at their one meeting a year. How did, he, how did, how did that issue come up? Did he just like call you guys up and said like, I don't understand he goes, why? He would go to his human resource department and say, hey, I'm getting all these bills. I can't afford this. I'm, they're telling me I'm going to get put in collections because that's what happens. Yeah. Hospital, sell, ho hospital will sell the debt mm -hmm. to someone else and that debt collector will then call you and then they're putting pressure on you and you feel, I don't want my credit impaired. Right. I don't know what to right. do. That's right. when you would immediately involve a, a broker such as myself to hop on the phone, get in touch with the hospital, get in touch with the insurance company and get it all worked out. Wow. But, okay. right, but like I said, this is a larger issue. Yeah. Any, this could happen to anyone. Yep. So education is vital and key. So what we did was we incorporated not just a one time a year, hey, we're going to have a meeting and talk about it because people forget. We're human. We have a million things going on. We're going to do a stacked approach where we're going to give mailers. We're going to also, there's an app based. So it's all on an app. So all of your benefits would be on an application and okay. we would build it. And then let's say you have a question, it's a one tap on the app. Oh, no kidding. All of it. No phone calls, just an app that you can ask questions. Tap it in. Holy cow. And then what we also did was we put in a team of nurses for 24 seven. So like, let's say someone gets a more advanced diagnosis where you're stuck with, I don't know who to go to, yeah. I don't know which hospital, or you know, I really need an appointment, can you help me? Right. This nurse team was locked in and worked at these hospitals has been through this they're hand holding them they can answer any questions and they can guide them through the whole process so from a communication standpoint we're beginning to work like this happened to him we're going to make sure that it doesn't happen to anyone else wow and then another huge thing yeah. that we did that i really want to talk about is yeah. their pharmacy benefit contract okay? okay so pharmacy right there's the insurance company and then there's also a pharmacy benefit manager so the pharmacy benefit manager, what they do is they create a formulary or a list of drugs that are covered under your plan. Okay. They create the tiers. I'm sure you're aware yeah. of that. Like the co brand copay, generic copay, that's yeah. how you... So the formulary is everything that you could possibly get. Okay. Now the issue with certain pr pharmacy benefit manager contracts is that they're written in a manner that is not helpful to businesses. Mm. And they allow what's called spread pricing, right? So spread pricing. It's kinetic. Yep. This and this this happens to Medicare, Medicaid, you name it, it happens. And it happens in commercial insurance, what I do. I go to the CBS. Okay. okay. Yep. My prescription is thirteen dollars. Okay. The pharmacy may receive eight dollars of that. Now, when I go to the pharmacy and I go I go to pay for it they can charge me $18, $24, and this pharmacy benefit manager, they actually collect that spread. So that's how they make their revenue. In addition to fees and rebates, they're charging more for the medication up front. If you, because, it's in a, because it's in a brick and mortar. It's in like in a store. It, not even, it, because it's in a brick and mortar, and, and it all comes down to the contract. So because the contract dictates that you can't see the true pricing, it's not true, 
pass-through is what it's referred to. So you can pay them in two ways. The pharmacy benefit manager can get rebates, which mm -hmm. are if I take a brand medication, mm -hmm. the pharmacy benefit manager is going to go through all the brand medications for that month. They're going to submit it to the drug manufacturers, and then they're going to get a portion back. And at the at typically six months or after a year, they're going to get a large sum of money because, go back to the formulary, the covered of drugs, because they put them on the formulary, they receive rebates. Okay, mm. so they're getting so they're getting rebates for putting brand drugs, which may be higher costing, but there could be another brand drug that does the same exact thing that costs less that has a less rebate. But because there's a higher rebate, so you can th start to so think about what, what does somebody do that doesn't know all these things? Like, what do you do? Do you do you? You hire... would have no idea. Like you, you and I. I, if I we this have... is the first I'm ever hearing about this, yeah. and I am like, how do I not? It starts get sucked into like yeah, this corporate because it, BS. it's gonna help. It's gonna. It's really gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt your pocket. Yeah, I'm and a then, sole proprietor. And then when we're you're just having a meeting, just <laughs> we're not even on an interview now. Now I'm like, how do I? How do I figure this out? Go ahead. So think about this. Yeah. Benefits costs go up each year, yes, right? Correct. Oh, you're paying more for your prescription. It starts with the contract and the dialogue. Okay, let's first look at your contract. Mm -hmm. How are they doing the discounts? Are they are there specific definitions in there that are protecting you to make sure that if it's a gener generic you're getting X, if it's a brand you're getting this, and then to make sure the formulary there isn't these silly medications yeah. that are that don't make any sense. They're compound medications that cost more than off the counter medications, but but because they're together, mm -hmm. give you an example. Everyone refers to this as really common. Duexis, two thousand dollars. What the hell is Duexis? It's Pepsid and ibuprofen. What? Two thousand dollars. What? Did Jesus Christ himself make it? Conjure it up? Apparently so, but okay. Is you this get what people are yelling about in Congress? I guess so. Is that what they're doing? But think about okay. all these things that are going on behind the scenes. Oh, it starts with a contract. Sweating. You need to fully access you need to fully assess your pharmacy benefit manager. Right, right. You right, need right. to do what we would do is a financial analysis to say, okay, the, these drugs were filled. We're gonna take the NDC codes. It's a numerical provision that tells you exactly what drug it was, manufacturer, and then you're gonna look at the quantity, and then you're gonna reprice it under a different contract or new pharmacy benefit manager. So go back to the communication. Right. Go back to the pharmacy, clean both up. Mm -hmm. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars that were saved, and we're not changing anything. You're getting the same drugs, or you're being told to, hey, if you take this drug, you could save money, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and a more powerful communication. And this is what happens when people work with it. You guys go through these contracts. You go you, you, with a fine tooth comb, making sure that they're getting and saving the most amount of money. I love this stuff. Yeah, I, I can't <laughs> tell. This is like, I love scrubbing through files, looking wow, at claims you're such data. A nerd. I am. I love it so much. I really am. You're yep. such a dork. I love <laughs> it because that would give me hives. Mm -hmm. But people like you in industries like that are so important because you're sa you're saving people's lives, dude. Like that's what you're. Holy cow. I like to hone it like a laser because then you can yeah. start to see it. You, and it's you once you sp once it's out there, yeah. then it just opens it up. And then the business the business owner was like. How did this happen? Because yeah. they all they think is I was told I was on a good contract. Yeah. They increased the the contract and the discounts mean nothing if they aren't to you to the business. Meaning oh they're God. just an aggregate. Hey, our whole book is this discount. So you have no idea. You could be performing well under. Wow. And that's that's what we. Those are the types of items where we go in and, and address it right away because it's significant. It's going to affect you for the life of your business. The contracts tell a story, and it, it, have you always been naturally curious? Because it seems like you've been an investigator for a long time. Like you, you, yeah, it's kind of in that space. I because you know in the beginning, in the beginning of my career, yeah. it started out like, hey, I got handed more and more stuff, mm -hmm. and then this the pharmacy components started coming out, and then the medical components started coming out with balanced bills. So I spent hours and hours researching contracts what are people in the industry doing what's the law saying like how how do we address this and I just started having conversations with people yeah. I started talking to the experts in the industry that have been here for 20 years and they're looking at me like all right yeah I'll, let me impart some knowledge on you and then all of a sudden you start to become that subject matter expert you yeah. start to take that solution compile it all together right. and bring that to the table what do you think the biggest misconception of employee benefits is I think the biggest misconception and this really it, it drives me nuts is that they you think that if I send out my insurance, so let, let's say I'm the business owner, mm -hmm. right? If I send out my insurance plan out to bid to all competing insurance carriers, okay? And that and that's the strategy. 
that has no that has no impact to your claim cost, how often people are going, or the care that they're receiving. Mm -hmm. So just sending it out and doing a marketing is what it's referred to has no financial impact. All that's going to do is it's it's a hope and a prayer that you perform well that year and that you don't get hit on the back end with a large renewal increase. Mm. That's the biggest thing and, and understanding that market leverage. So market leverage, hey, yeah, we have yeah. a big block with such and such company, so we get you a good discount. That does not exist. That's a common misconception. I get the same rate that Joe Schmo down the street gets, that Sally all the way down there gets. Everyone's getting the same rate from the insurance company. If I were to quote and shop your plan, right. what you really need to do is understand what is, what is increasing your costs, how do you address that, and what's the long-term plan? What's the horizon? Not just a one-year transaction right. where you're just, hey, let's shop it, this is the best rate, and we choose it. You have no idea what's underneath the sun. Like, what if the pharmacy contract is not supporting your employees? Or what if the employees, where they go, the hospital systems, mm -hmm. where they go, they don't have the highest discounts. You're not looking at the utilization. Right. And then all of a sudden, you're in the same trap as next year, and you're starting to switch year over year. You're in this vicious kind of mousetrap cycle, right. and that's why we look to address it. You need to understand what is going on with your program. It's much more than just mapping a quote out. It's mm -hmm. not, it's nothing like, you know, an auto or property insurance. Like it's, it's very, very important to understand what is driving that cost. And that's what you guys do. You educate your clients into understanding the cost or you just take care of it for them. Exactly. So it's kind of like a one-stop shop. Be like, do people usually come to you guys to be uh, proactive or reactive? So it can be one of two ways. It's, you know, hey, that renewal experience didn't go well. I didn't really feel like I covered all my options. A lot of the times, you have a 60-day window. Mm. You get that renewal, and then think about this. You have a 60-day window, and you have all these other things you got to do. Payroll, you got to do your 401k, all these things, and you have to make this benefit decision. And because of that, you also have to think about the communication to employees because right. the plan's effective in mm -hmm. two months, so you better like hit the ground running, get everyone enrolled. It's a lot going on. It's a flurry. So what we seek to do is... Let's get you out of the cycle. Right. We're going to use our underwriting team using their methodology. Mm -hmm. We're going to we're going to underwrite that and we're going to tell you exactly what your financial exposure is. We're going to tell you, "Hey, this is where we anticipate your renewal." Mm -hmm. Get out of the cycle. Plan ahead. We don't want you to make a bad decision for lack of time when you can you can proactively seek it. So, going back to your question, proactive or reactive, it really depends. It's all about the pain points. If if the benefits costs are going up each year, or if there's issues with turnover, or if there's, hey, we want to do better, mm -hmm. then it would it, it would be reactive in a sense that they finally are realizing, hey, you know what, maybe we should shop this out, we should look at other consultants. Or it could be, you know, hey, we, ha we know we have this coming up, we know that this didn't go so well last year because of the timing, I hear that a lot, we're time crunched, what can you do? Mm -hmm. And that's when I can come in, and, and really to me is, I'm going to use your data, right. I'm going to use your plans, I'm going to use everything, I'm going to show you. Yeah. And I'm going to give you your option. opportunities and deficiencies. Whether you use me or not, yeah. that's completely up to you, but I want to make sure that you understand what you can do. We are done, dude. They just told me to wrap up. I don't want to stop talking. This is amazing. <laughs> do me a favor, because I'm a little shell-shocked. Yeah. Look at this camera right there, tell people how they can find you. So you can find me on LinkedIn, Tyler's a Lucky. Feel free to contact me at any time. You know, this is a networking show. We were supposed to talk about networking, but I didn't want to. Dude, yeah. I am so thrilled that you are here. Here's, here's how this can revolve around in the networking. Tyler is a subject matter expert in his field, and I'm going to talk about you some things we've got to talk about. Okay. Uh, you're a subject matter expert in your field, and if, if, if you don't work with people that educate you or you don't network with people that educate you the way that Tyler does, they don't belong in your sphere of influence. So. Everybody, thank you very, very much for, for joining us today on Connect to Success with me, Ashley Owens. If you'd like to be a guest, please email Ashley at Ashley Sis. Love to have you on the show. Come talk about your tactical tips and practical takeaways, or just talk the entire time about how <laughs> you're getting screwed over by your anesthesiologist. Uh, everybody, we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.